Hey guys, it's Jesse, and welcome back to Video Everyday February. Today I have decided I want to talk about how my opinions of Israel and my connection to Israel have changed um, since going to Israel. Um, so before I went to Israel, I really did not see the importance of the Jewish state. Um, and I also didn't see the importance of the Jewish state being in the land that it's in. So while we were in Israel, they showed us around to a lot of different places. We met a lot of different people. We met a lot of Jewish people, obviously. Um, but we also met some um, Arabs. We met a bunch of Muslims. Um, and they all talked to us about like their own experiences living in Israel and it was very interesting um, and not really what I had expected because everything that I've been told about Israel has either come from um, very biased Hebrew school teachers who most of them are Israeli um, or have family in Israel or um, from the media who hate Israel. They they really and truly hate Israel. I think it's hard to say why the media hates Israel. I think a lot of it has to do with just very basic anti-Semitism. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with not necessarily fully understanding what the political situation is going on in Israel. I think a lot of people think that um, like, anyone who calls Israel an apartheid state doesn't really know what they're talking about. Um, a lot of movements like Black Lives Matter and Students for Palestine and Justice for Palestine um, have a very sort of one-sided view of the situation. They see Jews as white, which at a very, like, no knowledge, no historical knowledge, standpoint, you can see, just from this video, that my skin is basically the same color as this wall. I basically look like the wall. So if you were going to be like, oh, whiteness is pure skin tone and it's not a deeper issue than that, then yes, Jews would be white. But um, yeah, uh, I don't think when you take into account um, historical perspective and issues of xenophobia and issues of religious intolerance and the fact that Jews are a part of an ethno-religion, um, I don't think the Jewish experience is a part of the white experience. I think they are two very, very different things. Um, so a lot of people in the Black Lives Matter movement see what's happening in Israel and see it as um, sort of similar to what's happening in the states in terms of the way that Palestinians are treated by Jews and black people by um, uh, white people and it's just you're comparing apples and oranges it is a false equivalency I really think that that is like not the comparison to be making um, I don't think that the situation is similar. I think it's very different. I think it's way more complicated in Israel. But before I went to Israel, I sort of felt like a lot of the things that the Israelis were doing is wrong. I felt that it was almost um, racial bias. But I also, like, I didn't feel like it was fully racial bias because I don't think that's possible, um, even though I know that um, one of my very close friends thinks that it is very much like racism. I didn't understand the Jewish connection to Israel. I um, felt that, of course, the Jews should have a place to go because the whole world is anti-Semitic, um, but why does it have to be Israel, of all places? Why does it have to be that land. Um, why does it have to be called a Jewish state? Why can't it just be a place where the Jews can live and be safe? Um, why does it have to be also the Holy Land? 
Um, and these are all very complicated questions that are very much encouraged by Judaism. And I felt that my opinion totally changed over the course of being on birthright and being in Israel. Um, I didn't... I think the biggest change that happened for me over the course of being on birthright is that before I went to Israel, I felt really neutral. I felt like it wasn't a place that I was ever going to live. I didn't really think it was going to be a place that I would visit. Kind of made a snap drunk decision with my friends to go. Um, and while I was there, I just sort of developed this real love for Israel. If you are part of any minority group and you've gone from being in the outer society. So let's say Home Depot. So let's say you are part of a minority group and you go to Home Depot. You probably would not feel the safest in the world bunch of macho dudes. Um, you've got people of various ethnic backgrounds who could go into Home Depot, people of different uh, sexual orientations, gender identities, etc. Everyone needs stuff for their home, so everyone would go to Home Depot. Um, now let's say you're gay and you go from Home Depot to then going to the Pride Parade you suddenly feel like this wave wash over you that all these people are like on your side, they all have similar stories to you, um, they all believe a lot of similar things to you, um, they believe in you, they are the same as you. That is essentially the feeling that I got when I was in Israel, was that, oh my god, I am with my people in a place where we belong. And I think maybe that was also influenced by the time of year that we were there. We were there over um, winter break, so that's like Christmas and Hanukkah. Um, and usually, I hate Christmas. I really hate Christmas. I think it is the worst holiday. It is my least favorite time of year because um, Hanukkah is not important. And I hate hearing people say, Hanukkah is just like Jewish Christmas, because it's not. It is so different, so unbelievably different. But I was in Israel over Christmas, and it was the best Christmas I have ever had, because I didn't hear about it. I didn't hear about Christmas once, except for when I got on social media and then my blood pressure rose. But it was so amazing to be in a country that shuts down for the day of rest every week and then does not care about the Christian holiday that's happening. Does not care at all. It was really amazing. Um, and it was, I just felt so much more at home when that was happening. Um, and then, I mean, I also got to be at the Western Wall on Hanukkah. We were going to light the menorah there, but we, it just, it was raining. It was terrible weather. There was so much in this trip, being surrounded by Jewish people, being accepted by all Jewish people. We would go walking on the street and um, people would stop us and like ask us if we were with Taglit, which is um, the Hebrew word for birthright essentially. Um, and we were stopped by um, an Orthodox man lighting his menorah, and he said, come bless the menorah with me. This didn't happen to me, but to um, a few of my friends at the Western Wall, um, they were asked where they were from, and they said, I'm from America, and um, people said to them, welcome home. And it just, like, my skin is tingling. I, like, want to cry. Um, I don't know. I just, like, I love the Jewish people so much. It is unreal. Um, we learned a lot about um, Theodore Herzl 
in Israel, and we also learned about um, Ben Gurion, who is the first Prime Minister of Israel, who declared Israel a Jewish state. Um, and over the course of being in Israel and talking to Israelis, I learned why that's important. Um, because obviously I already knew about anti-Semitism before I got there because I live it. Um, but to see how these people are living, how like these Israelis, we were like led around by soldiers. We were very lucky to have six soldiers for the entire 10 days that we were there. People usually don't get the soldiers for 10 days. And these soldiers, like, they love their life in Israel. They love it so much. They would do anything for their country. They understand that by protecting Israel protects the Jewish people around the world. Um, we learned about um, the Israeli Air Force going out and rescuing Jews in nations where Jews were being killed or forced to convert. I just really think that if Israel stopped existing at this point, the Jewish people wouldn't live much longer afterwards. Before I went to Israel, I really felt that I was watching almost the final wave of anti-Semitism, which is super pessimistic and not really what the situation is like, but I am Jewish. So I fear. Um, but after seeing Israel and everything that I'm saying doesn't fully express what it is that I was able to witness and to feel and to, to sink in. But I really went through this transformation where I started to believe that we need a Jewish state and we need it to be where our footprints have been historically. <laughs> um, and if you're thinking about commenting down below, no, 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 it belongs to the Palestinians, I would like you to please go into your textbooks and look and see what the Romans renamed Judea, okay? They renamed it Palestine and then people moved there. I used to think that I, that the Jewish state needed to move somewhere else, and that's not what I believe anymore. Um, I really, really hope that in my lifetime I can see Jews and Arabs living side by side. Um, I was able to see that. We went to an Arab-Israeli village where they were living side by side. I don't remember the name of the village, but I'll look it up and I'll put it in the link below. The link. The description box. You know? with the situation in um, the West Bank and Gaza, those are totally different. Um, Hamas puts, you know, bombs and weapons in civilian houses, and that is why the Israeli government so frequently is, you know, attacking civilians because of, you know, they can't get just Hamas. Hamas wants to wipe out all Jews, which is, you know, what Israel is there to protect, um, and they want to end the state of Israel. But the Palestinian people are clearly done with the conflict, and all of the Israelis I talk to are done with the conflict, and I think they both honestly just want to live side by side at this point. Um, it's really a matter of my generation, um, and if you're about my age, it's our job to figure out how to repair and remediate the situation and make it possible for Jews and Arabs to not have to be fighting each other just so that they can both survive. I really, like, came away from this really loving Israel. Um, I think that maybe I might want to live there. I definitely think I'm going to go back. Um, partially just because they have a lot of opportunities for my job industry, but also because I should go there. It's my homeland. So that is how my opinions of Israel has changed before going to Israel, after going to Israel. Um, 
Hope you like this video. This will probably be one of the longer ones for video every day of February. Please, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, um, or, you know, just tune in next time. It's up to you. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.